All right, hello and welcome to the WISE Worldwide Online Expo. I'm Damian Kaspauer, Software Product Manager here at Audio Kinetic, and I'm joined by Head of Product and Audio Kinetic co-founder, Simon Ashby. Hey, Simon. Hey, Damian. How are you? I'm doing great today. Uh, thanks for being here. What's uh, the weather like in Montreal these days? Yeah, it's not so bad. We're uh, it's still fall, and uh, <laughs> not a lot of snow has fell in Montreal, at least. Uh, up north, we have a cabin up north. There's a, there's already a bunch of snow up there, but uh, yeah. yeah, it won't be long. You'll be uh, snowed in and scraping ice off the car every day. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here in Seattle, I soaked up the last golden drops of sun these uh, past days, and now it's turned gray. Uh, we'll be heading into the cloud for the next six months. So, Yeah. Okay. Good luck with that. <laughs> Winter uh, everywhere, I guess. So I'm excited to be here with you today. We're going to be covering some exciting aspects of the new WISE 23.1 release. And uh, we're going to get an update from you on our Strata multi-track sound library afterwards. Uh, yes. So uh, we'll wrap back up with you here in a few. And, uh, you know, thanks for folks to join us here in the chat. Uh, great to have you with us today uh, as we roll out some of the exciting things happening here at Audio Kinetic. Uh, and with that, I'll see you on the other side, Simon. All right. Thank you. All right. I have a good presentation. Thank you. So that's that. We're going to be talking WISE 23.1 along with an update from Strata coming up uh, afterwards from Simon. And with that, I'm just going to take it away. Let's jump in. And if you haven't seen the WISE logo making of video, I highly encourage you to check that out on YouTube. But it's great to be here today celebrating the release of WISE 2023.1, uh, released on November 16th, one year and one day from last year's 22.1 release. Uh, and we continue to work towards empowering you to deliver outstanding interactive experiences with WISE. Uh, today, first up, I want to acknowledge the hard work that goes into updating WISE for each release, starting with the software development teams at Audio Kinetic responsible for turning dreams into code, uh, along with the guidance and direction of our production and management teams. And moving backward from today, the folks in quality assurance who participate in the development of new and evolving features, uh, continuously validating, ensuring their stability for the release, and working hand in hand alongside the tools and automation team who are working to make our automated tests and internal development pipeline reliable. Uh, and this collaborative partnership extends to you. Uh, over 3,000 of you installed the beta version we made available in July. And the feedback many of you provided through the survey, through our customer support team, and in conversations throughout the year has helped us deliver the best possible 2023.1. And this extends into our process of updating our sample projects, which we made available as of last Friday. Uh, and it starts with the integrations team carrying features from the beta to our engine integrations for Unreal and Unity, uh, bringing them up to date and giving us a chance to explore the creative uses and application of WISE across our samples. It puts us in the center of the development environments that you're used to and gives us a chance to be the first users of our own features. Like I get to put my hands and ears on these exciting new features of 23.1 and help sculpt these samples to help illustrate the ways these new features can be used. And each of these features has been thoroughly documented, uh, first by the audio kinetic development teams, 
and often further shaped, augmented, and refined by the documentation team who helped bring additional fidelity and focus. And speaking of documentation, we recently launched the ability to add a thumbs up or thumbs down along with comments at the bottom of each of the documentation pages. And the feedback we receive directs us to places where we can add precision and context to help people with a greater understanding. Meanwhile, the education team, in collaboration with the web team, have recently reorganized the online learning resources to better guide you on your path. So whether you're just getting started with the fundamentals of interactive audio, jumping into certifications, or teaching WISE worldwide, uh, maybe you've participated in one of our workshops or team training events. Regardless, the resources are there to help you advance your career in interactive audio. Uh, and finally, the customer support team, working between developers using WISE and the teams at Audio Kinetic, who help answer questions and unblock creative and technical challenges. You know, huge acknowledgement to folks at Audio Kinetic, everyone working together to contribute to this release of 2023.1. And we've been out there evolving the ways that developers are using WISE to create amazing experiences. Um, and we've been communicating about how we're doing it in advance along the way. So if you participated in the public beta over the summer, checked out the WISE 2023.1 What's New blog, uh, or joined us for the WISE Up On Air 2023.1 beta live stream, you've already heard about the ways that this version is continuing to grow in the direction of the interactive audio community. So today we're gonna to go high level on a few feature areas of WISE 2023.1, including spatial audio, user experience, we're gonna dig into loudness normalization and other usability features, along with a bit of what's in store for the future. And if you've tuned into the beta, you'll know that some incredible work has gone into spatial audio for this release. First, by adding new platforms for Apple and Android devices, increasing the number of platforms that can benefit from 3D audio. This technology enables the opportunity for increased spatial precision by delivering audio in an intermediary format that includes information above and below the listener plane. And it leverages WISE's object-based audio pipeline, which we introduced in 2021. Developers can route sounds across three categories offering different levels of spatial precision, creatively informing the presentation of sounds categorically that can scale across any output. And once the routing intention is in place, the system's audio endpoint can choose and convert this format to any standard channel configuration or as a binaural mix when using headphones or in an immersive channel-based mix that provides height channels, ultimately delivering the best mix according to the selected output configuration. And earlier this year, we partnered with Dolby to continue focusing on bringing developers a standardized way to produce and deliver spatial interactive audio content for games that is adaptive across devices and platforms, ensuring that the object-based format continues to grow towards interactive workflows alongside its adoption in cinema, broadcast, and music. Meanwhile, we've been evolving and expanding on the concepts at the core of our spatial audio acoustics technology adding to the sound propagation of rooms and portals with the addition of reverb zones in 2023.1. Reworking the way auxiliary sends work, allowing for greater precision when filtering environmental sounds. Tools to help mitigate the naturally occurring phenomenon of phasing using Reflect, our plugin for early reflections while offering creative stereo widening alongside Doppler pitch shift and speed of sound controls. 
and continuously raycasting to get more information from the world while improving performance. And we're going to continue to evolve these spatial audio acoustic tools with the goal of convincing you that the sounds you're creating originate from the world around you. And with 23.1, it's never been a better time to spend some time with these new spatial audio acoustics features to reflect on the ways it could benefit immersion in your experiences. Be sure to get signed up through our customer profile at audiokinetic.com to receive updates when blogs and live streams are happening. Over the next months, we'll be tackling some of these spatial audio acoustics features in depth from a series of blogs penned by the folks behind the features. As well, we're gonna dig into two live streams and go hands-on in December uh, with Reflect and getting started with some of these spatial audio acoustics tools in Unreal. So this release also sees the experience team extending workflows and continually refining the user interface and WISE. In 2022.1, we added a contextual tab-based workflow that's the start of something that we're gonna to continue to evolve towards greater usability in the future. And right now we're in the process of working with small groups of both experienced and new users of WISE to help validate the next important steps towards a workflow that leverages your experience with modern software tools, feels comfortable and feels natural. Uh, this is in addition to the internal prototype testing that we're doing uh, we're always able to go hands-on with the experienced developers at Audio Kinetic for direct feedback and, and along the way using that feedback to grow in the direction of these usable workflows. But for now, as part of WISE 2023.1, the number of effects that can be added to each object has been expanded to 255 per object, so no longer limited to four. Uh, you know, fool around and find out what happens when you add 50 flangers, a dozen delays, or 100 guitar distortions to your object. Uh, but be sure to keep an eye on your plug-in CPU and the performance monitor and keep on the sunny side of your resource budget and in the good graces of your engineering team. Uh, that WISE profiler is there to help support you in your creative exploration. So be sure to leverage that uh, power for good. Uh, but that's not all. We've also optimized the effect editor tabs, uh, making them fall in line with uh, our new object tab, tab workflow. Uh, we added the meter tab as a tab to every audio and aux bus. So now you can expand the number of meters uh, visible at any given time or bring them contextually as part of your workflow. And we also brought tabs to the audio device editor. So now you have access within reach to your meters and effects uh, without having to change views. And we continue to honor the perspectives that folks out there bring to us uh, about some of these smaller usability aspects uh, by continuing to make small changes that can have big impact on designers' daily workflow. Uh, things like adding new user-definable layouts that you can change and add to uh, depending on your workflows. Uh, small changes to the presentation of blend tracks and RTPC graphs. Uh, the source editor and music segment editor got some workflow improvements. Resizable game sync lists in the Soundcaster. Again, just a small thing that we've heard from folks uh, is, you know, would be great to have as part of their daily workflow. Uh, along with improvements to the search tool, giving you easier access and uh, keeping you focused on the task you're working on. Uh, which brings me to a feature that can be fundamental as part of interactive mixing workflows, and that's loudness normalization. 
Enabling loudness normalization allows for the ability to non-destructively tune loudness normalization across different sound categories, arriving at a consistent standard to build your interactive mix. And in 2023.1, we've added a new momentary maximum type to provide flexibility and greater control over loudness measurement for short duration sounds. So now you can choose between integrated measurement, which is useful for long audio program materials, such as music or cinematics, and momentary max, best suited for short individual audio elements, such as sound effects. This helps to ensure that you can mix across categories with confidence and count on any dynamic mixing systems like HDR audio or side chaining to operate with consistency. Again, we think that this brings a workflow to folks where they're able to rely on the work that they've done and mix effectively to bring the best representation forward. And there's a ton of other features focused squarely on developer workflows. Uh, the framework team has replaced the 3D graphics backend that's used across multiple views and whys and brings a host of hardware compatibility improvements along with user experience updates in the game object 3D viewer. Uh, updates to WAPI and WACL, the WISE authoring API and WISE query language, uh, including audio file import, new functions, and better work unit and perforce experience. Uh, these are tools that are at the uh, core of developers who are extending their workflows outside of WISE and really fine tuning it for the way that they like to work. The integrations team rolled out a newly consolidated WISE browser for Unreal that gives visibility to the status of assets along with the ability to reconcile differences, keeping things in sync. And over in Unity, we added an enter play mode option, helping to reduce iteration time in the editor. And we're gonna work on bringing that WISE browser to Unity in a future release. Lastly, we've added motion plugin support to iOS, tvOS, and macOS. Uh, as the list of platforms grows, that can leverage haptics for controllers and other devices featuring vibration. And if you haven't heard of the motion plugin, uh, it's a way to use WISE to create and dynamically control haptic response using sound or by synthesizing your own. Uh, to create increased physical immersion uh, using controllers, haptic vests, surface actuators, and other devices that can help bridge that gap between the real world and the experiences you're creating. We squeezed one more thing into this release that we're excited to talk about. And if you've had your eyes on the what's new, uh, you'll already have seen this. And that is experimental support for an in-development feature that, uh, that we want you to try out. It's called Live Media Transfer. Uh, we believe that the ability to quickly iterate as part of your development workflows towards the greatest expression of interactive audio is at the core of the best possible results. And Live Media Transfer aims to decrease iteration time when you're connected to the game, so keeping you in the flow of your work. Uh, and we'll continue to work to allow the adding and modifying sound media to hear that result immediately. Uh, this means creating new sound SFX, music segments while connected using the usual workflows, without regenerating sound banks for things like audio sources, MIDI, and impulse response files used by the AK Convolution plugin. Uh, you can get more information about how it works and the current known limitations uh, in the what's new uh, and in the release notes, and we're looking for feedback. So if you toggle this feature on, give it a try, see how it speeds up or can speed up your workflows as you're connected to the game running in real time. And we're just gonna to continue to build and stabilize this for future release. So 
send us feedback. Now let's focus on you. Uh, here at Audio Kinetic, we are listening closely and continually in awe of the tremendous experiences that you're creating with WISE. And we know that technology is constantly evolving and each year develop, developers like you find new ways to take advantage of the power and flexibility across platforms. So whether it's things like the positioning precision afforded through the adoption of 3D audio or the environmental representation of spatial audio acoustics or simply scaling to expand today's experiences beyond the screen with sound. Uh, Wise is there empowering you to deliver outstanding, interactive, and amazing, immersive experiences. And I wanted to shine a light on the ways that today's developers are making audio more usable. While the technology to support these features is nothing new, it's inspirational to see how developers are enabling the best presentation of audio for folks out there playing our games and experiencing what we create. Things like the audio calibration settings to adjust the difference between quiet and loud sounds and audio cues that play additional sounds supporting low vision play in the menu for God of War Ragnarok or the frequency controls in Spider-Man 2, or the hyperacusis filter in Alan Wake 2 to block high-pitched noises like sirens, machinery, or tire screeches. Uh, other things like boosting dialogue or confining it to the center channel, monophonic audio output, all of these uh, lending themselves to a greater user ability to tune their experience with sound. Uh, these additions are the result of hard work on the part of audio developers who are able to advocate for these usability features with sensitivity and tenacity, knowing that they can be easily achieved using WISE. Uh, and these, to me, represent the maturation of an industry that is able to rely on their tools to provide them with the capability to reach for these solutions with confidence. Like the cross-platform mastering suite plugin that can be used to create and manage presets for different listening environments, using a six-band EQ, a four-band compressor, per-channel gain, and a limiter at the end of the signal chain. Like these are tools that you can rely on to help you uh, create the best experience and put in the hands of users the ability to tune things. Uh, for their given scenario. And sometimes the end of the signal chain comes from a non-standard output, uh, like sitting in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon at Disney's Star Wars Galaxy Edge, or at Super Nintendo World as part of the boss battle Bowser Jr. experience. Uh, WISE is there helping to bridge this gap between physical and digital worlds for location-based entertainment. So let's start looking forward to what's on the near horizon. Uh, we've got a full schedule of hands-on live streams focusing on reflect phasing mitigation, uh, getting started with spatial audio acoustics in Unreal, auto-defined sound banks in the new WISE browser, and the continued growth of WAPI and WACL, the WISE authoring API and WISE authoring query language. Uh, a tool that developers are using to extend and automate their workflows. Additionally, we've lined up some great presentations starting this Friday, continuing the series of monthly hands-on explorations of Strata Collections and their application inside Unreal using WISE. Chase Steele takes us on a tour each month of the content uh, in Reaper, highlighting layers, effects, automation, and then he uses Strata in Unreal to demonstrate the flexibility of these collections. And coming up next week, I'm excited to be joined by the developers for an indie game called Venba to talk about their use of period appropriate music and sound for this Indian storytelling game. Pieces are falling in place uh, to go 
behind the scenes with some folks uh, at Lariant on Baldur's Gate 3, so stay tuned for the date when we drop it. And we'll continue to surface new features directly from Audio Kinetic developers, uh, including the recent update uh, on the state of our wise Unreal integration or choosing the right codec, uh, as well as the series of blogs from the Spatial Audio team. So keep them peeled for those. And dig back into some of the incredible WISE developer stories that we've featured on WISE Up On Air. Uh, while we continue to work towards surfacing the amazing work of developers like you, uh, I just want to throw out a special thanks to the marketing team who are instrumental in helping WISE reach the community through blogs, the scheduling of live streams, coordinating events like the WISE Tour in Hilversum this past fall uh, for the opening of our European subsidiary. And you can look forward to videos from those presentations uh, from Respawn and, and their presentation on Jedi Survivor, Alexander Horwitz's WISE Takeaways uh, from Managing Large-Scale Projects, and keep them peeled for next year's scheduled WISE tours, hopefully in a city near you. Uh, marketing team doing an incredible job coordinating our outward facing presence uh, with WISE. And finally, to the worldwide business development teams at Audio Kinetic, helping to align the needs of each project with licensing to match their budget, including our free for indies license. So, WISE 2023.1 is out there, it's done. And in while we were working on it, the launcher team was hard at work improving the usability and adding value to the newly updated Audio Kinetic Launcher. The launcher is the hub for downloading WISE versions, managing your Unity and Unreal integrations, and checking out our samples. Uh, along with uh, access to our blog and other content. Not to mention Strata, which is coming up here in a moment. But whether you're reporting a bug, engaging with the WISE community Q&A, communicating directly with support, or taking the feature release survey associated with each release, Drop us a line anytime across these many feedback channels to let us know how you're experiencing WISE. Uh, we're here listening and we're growing things in the direction of your workflows. And we're so glad to have you as part of our WISE user ecosystem. This growing community of 250,000 WISE users, over 1,500 developers, along with partners, platform developers, WISE ambassadors, authors, students, instructors, and academic institutions uh, worldwide. So with that, thanks again for being part of this rich tapestry of perspectives, helping to create inspiring interactive audio experiences with WISE. Uh, I'm gonna hand it off to Simon to go hands-on with Strata, Simon, so excited hey. to have uh, this moment for you to talk about the exciting things that have been happening with Strata over the last year. Well, thank you very much. That's uh, it's incredible everything we've done <laughs> this past year with Wise, and uh, and concluding with a rich tapestry of I don't remember what, but rich tapestry, right? Yeah, That's... yeah. yeah. <laughs> weaving, weaving the fabric of interactive audio. I'm going to take, take exactly. that. Okay, Great. so thank you very much. All right. All right. So, um, hey, welcome, everyone. Thanks for being here. Um, so I was here last year at a live stream with Damien, uh, and it was the basically the launch, the release of Strata. And uh, we wanted to uh, use this um, this event to do to look at the first year anniversary. So uh, actually, it's been a bit more than that. It's been 13 months now uh, since we released it. But there's been a lot of things accomplished, and we wanted to make a status on on all those things uh, with you today. Because last year we 
promised <laughs> a series of things that will be done, and and we accomplish on those things, and and even more actually, and there's still plans for a lot of new things coming up. So so the next thirty minutes ish, uh, I'll go through uh, that content with you. And by the way, um, if you're watching that live currently um, and you have questions, use the chat, and we'll try to answer those questions uh, at the end uh, if there's any. So. Um, so Strata, so let's take a couple of minutes just for maybe people that have never seen Strata before. So we'll just establish what it is and then we'll go with the plan and, and where we're heading with that. So Strata is a sound effects library that is offered in multi-track format. And to our knowledge, it's the only one uh, produced this way. So all the other libraries out there, what they offer, what they package basically is the final files, you know, the rendered files. And sometimes uh, they will also uh, offer the, the construction kit, so some of the layers that's been pre-rendered. So Strata offers exactly the same thing. So we offer in our collections all the rendered files, but we also offer, and this is where the magic happens, the multi-track project that's been used and created to come up with this final sound and to come up with the construction kit elements. Uh, but this time around, again, instead of just having you know the, the, the result, the WAV files, you have all the clips, edits, all the settings, all the volumes at your disposal, all the effects inserted that are not rendered. So you can still adjust the distortion amount that you want and EQ and delay and all of that so that you come up with exactly the result that you're expecting uh, in the end. So this for us is like the, the next generation of sound effects generation where you have much more control than what we've been having for the last 50 years, maybe. Don't know how long we've been selling uh, sound effects collections uh, historically, but it's been a while. And, and here is the just the finest amount of granularity and control that you can get. Um, so the benefits for that, so of course, you have everything at your disposal, uh, every clips, anything that you can customize. So it's really easy to come up with exactly what you need, to render just portion of what you need for your game and things like that. And consequently, you, you kind of end up with a really streamlined workflow because you start with something that is super well organized and you just have from there to start being creative. And it just occurred to me recently, and, and I never had that personally, but I know it existed, but it's like Strata is like the luxury of having your own sound assistant prepping all the projects for you. So remember back in the days, in the good years of recording studios where there's the main engineer that is there, but there's always an assistant prepping the room, the microphones, the cables, and, and the, the mixing boards. And when the main engineers arrive, everything is ready to start recording the musicians up there. So with Strata, is exactly that. You get your sound that you want to start with because you, you got that sound from your results. And then you say, OK, let's now let's make it exactly the color or the feeling that I need for the content I'm producing it for. And everything is laid out for you, properly labeled, named, separated, and ready, basically, to, to be customized. So that's, that's great. Um, and ev all the content has been created by top tier designers starting with the highest quality source. And, and what is nice working, so we started working with Boom, and, uh, and we promised new partners. I'm going to talk about that in a couple of minutes. Um, so, But the idea is really to make sure that when a collection is produced, that this collection has been produced by somebody that has tons of experience doing that. So you get all that knowledge and all that experience out of each of the collections that are released. Um, and by looking at those multi-track sessions, there's a lot for you to learn uh, by reverse engineering. Uh, so I'm using a software <laughs> terminology for this. But you know, you, you kind of see all the tricks and all the methods that can be used to come up with those final sounds. And we receive a lot of good feedbacks, not only from junior people or students, like from veterans doing sound design like for decades and telling us, wow, I've like they, they discover new tricks and new approaches to sound design. So this is for us like super validating uh, again. And, and we 
are taking a bias when producing collections to choose the type of sounds and the type of actions and the way to lay out those projects so that it will be useful in an interactive context. Um, so and a simple example of that, if you look at our vehicle collection, what you're going to get is, for example, for the engine sound, you're going to get like 1000 RPM looping steady, 2000, 3000 and so on. So you can loop and pitch in real time instead of having car pass by, for example, like you would use for movies, uh, for example. So really, Strata is that super flexible format that facilitates, you know, customizing the sound exactly to what you need and and it's already all laid out it's it's your own personal assistant for sound design so it increases your productivity uh, for sure um, we chose reaper as our multi-track of choice as our daw to create uh, the the strata projects uh, for a series of reasons that are quite obvious like there's a lot of wise users that are using reaper uh, reaper is scriptable so we can create Strata-specific Reaper extensions and scripts. And I'm going to talk about that uh, in not so long. Uh, we created RiaWise. That is our extension that facilitates exporting content from Reaper to Wise. And it's super powerful, customizable, and it's almost free. So uh, that's uh, just a, a no-brainer to use that. So for all of the projects that you're going to receive, at least the one with one-shot sounds, it's always structured sim like similarly to what you're seeing right now, where you're going to see a series of regions, and those are your sounds, and those are your variations, basically. And again, it's, it's aimed at gaming and interactive experiences. So there's always a minimum of six variations per sound, because like we know that it's important that it's played by a random container later uh, at runtime. So, and it's six variation up to 16 variations for some uh, collections out there. So you get your regions and you get your layers. And in this case, we're looking at a pistol sound. So you get, you know, the layer for the body of the sound, the mechanism isolated, the transient, the punch and so on. And again, it's, uh, it's predictable. Every time you open something, you can, expect how those sounds will be created and separated and it's like really easy to know exactly how to extract certain components is that what you want and so on um and again what is important is to offer you control so the plugins where you that are used to create those sounds and those collections are also offered and nothing is pre-rendered for you so you always have the chance to change those settings so we started by integrating IEM suite of plugins, especially for the ambience collections. We ported all the wise included effects as VST3, and they are used here and there across the projects. And Enrage uh, effect is the effect that is used uh, a lot. <laughs> and for a good reason, because Enrage is an effect that's been created to help sound designers creating sound effects. And actually, the little story of that is Enrage started as an internal product for Boom for their sound designers when they create their collection to speed up the workflow and get to a better result uh, rapidly. And they, I guess they realized the potential of it and how great the effect was. And they decided eventually to say, oh, let's just commercialize. <laughs> this product is so great. So, um, so there's Enrage uh, on, on many of the tracks out there. Okay, so talking about integration. So last year when we released Rada, we already had RiaWise available. That was our first Reaper extension that helps transferring sounds from uh, Reaper to Wise. And rapidly, um, and there's videos on that, there's blog articles. So there's a ton of contents to uh, show you how to use um, RiaWise which is downloaded through RIA Pack, by the way. So if you're a Reaper uh, user, go on our website, you'll get the links, and it's easy. I, I, I could have done it in a few clicks. So it's really easy to, to set up. Um, so basically, we're leveraging what's available uh, in Reaper uh, in terms of their render matrix and the wildcard system. And we map that to wise objects, and that allows for the creation of hierarchies. And if you create the same type of content, a lot of time you can create presets. So it's easy to recall you know, certain ways or certain hierarchies you want to build. And you always have your preview uh, section at the bottom to tell you, OK, 
uh, and this is assuming wise is open uh, side by side so now you see that okay i'm going to create a random container that contains blend containers and sounds and this is what i want yes click on the transfer to wise button and maybe you've created 300 hierarchies in one go so uh, it's really powerful um other scripts that we created um for people so the the whole adventure of strata was to arrive on the market basically last year with the infamous you know mvp so the mvp is the minimum viable product uh, so that's what we wanted to do. We say, let's release Strata because it's already useful. There's already tons of content, it's high quality, but instead of doing too much, let's wait for the people using Strata to tell us where we need to improve and what we can do to make the workflow better, the quality better, the expectation, whatever, you know, uh, we want to do that with you. It's not our, it's our product that we're developing, but we're doing that for you, right? So the very first thing I believe we started receiving as a feedback was that um, we can speed up the time where they identify a sound that they want to work on and opening the Reaper project. So just to put you in context, if you subscribe to Strata, you receive all the content and you receive all the rendered files that you add to your own database of sound effects that you have. So maybe it's Soundly, maybe it's Soundminer, Basehead, maybe it's Reaper, maybe it's something else. But you just put it there. And sound designers own sound effects from tons of libraries. So obviously, if you look for, let's say, explosions, you're going to get a long list of explosions. And when you stumble on a sound that comes from Strata, and you say, OK, that sounds really good, but I want to change a debris, so for example, or you know, whatever. I want to have more control over that sound. Now you want, on a single click operation, to be able to open the Reaper project, get the playhead exactly at the same place where that sound was rendered from and start editing from that spot. So that's what we call the open associated reaper, reaper project. So we started doing that, integrating that in WISE. So as soon as you start using RIA-WISE and you export your content, those sources remember from which Reaper projects they've been outputted from. So six months later, if you want to change that explosion or that footstep sound, like you just right click, open associated Reaper project, and bang, you're in context, ready to fine tune uh, your thing. So once it was done, then we added this feature to Reaper itself, because you can create a database of media in Reaper. And, uh, and, and it's quite convenient. And there's a, a bunch of users uh, that are that is using uh, that feature from Reaper. So that was working well. And then we started having video game developers saying, well, we want that, but we're using Soundly, or we're using Soundminer and Basep. So basically, we contacted Soundly, uh, and we said, hey, Peter, we've got common clients, right? <laughs> the same users that would like this integration of Strata into uh, Soundly. Here's the code. What do you think? And then it was like, OK, that looks easy. And literally, in the case of Soundly, it was the day after he sent us a beta version saying, hey, it's, it's been easy to integrate. Try that. A couple of back and forth. And here it is. And it just been released last week. So if you're a Soundly user, make sure that you have the latest version, and you're going to get the, the, the feature of opening the associated Reaper project. Uh, Almost exactly the same story with Sound Miner, with the exception that it's currently in the 6.1 beta version. So if you're trying the beta version, you're going to have the feature. Otherwise, it will be when it's released. And I asked Justin, when is it releasing? He said, whenever I'm ready. So <laughs> soon-ish, uh, it should be available. But for sure, if you're owning Sound Miner 6.0, it's a free upgrade. And that's a free feature uh, available with it. And finally, with Basehead, because that's the other um, really popular um, database for that kind of thing, at least in the video game industry. And um, and Steve was telling me that, yes, I will do that. They're head down working on the 2024 version of Basehead. And apparently, it's a major rehaul, fantastic improvements of everything. It's going to be major, he was telling me. And that's when it will be added. So, uh, so this is first portion of next year sometime uh, that I've been told. Um, OK, so that's for, um, oh, and there's another one that I forgot to put there. And again, it's based on the feedback we, we had. So we had people using 
that are using Strata, sometimes they start directly from the Strata project, but some other time they start from scratch with other sounds, and then they, they are missing some layers, and they realize that those layers are, are part of Strata. And what they wanted is to easily isolate a few of the stems and their region and import that into the project they started working on. So, um, so this script is uh, is building right now. Uh, we're on it, and it's I, I guess it's available uh, as a beta thing, or it will soon be available. But we're, we're on it, and again, that's to speed up the workflow uh, tremendously. So talking about the production partners, uh, last year when we announced that, we said that we were working with Boom, and uh, and the goal was to uh, involve new partners uh, during the course of the year. So so yes, we've partnered with Boom. When we released, we had 12 collections uh, available, and we were promising to have 37 collections available by the end of the year. Guess what? 37 collections has been released. So. Uh, so that went really well. Working with Boom is fantastic. These guys are just so great at what they do, and they're, you know, like a Swiss watch type of <laughs> production cadence. Everything runs super smooth, and the quality is really awesome out of that. So that's great. Uh, and and Boom is still with us. Boom will keep uh, producing content, but we want to introduce new partners. That was the goal, and this is starting really really soon. So let's look at these new partners. Five of them will uh, be in the, the second round of partners to uh, integrate Strata. So, and the another feedback. So again, back to the MVP, back with this idea of releasing something that might not be perfect yet, but collecting the feedback from the users around. Uh, a feedback we received a lot was. Um, Having content from Boom is great because Boom is known by a lot of people. It's solid and, and so on. But they were telling us, like, we would like, like boutique uh, providers, like smaller companies or maybe just a single sound designer, uh, you know, working on their thing to, to get really unique type of sounds and really complementary aspect. So makes a lot of sense. Our goal, anyway, by onboarding many partners is to be complementary and, and is to get the best of the best, basically. If this group or this person is the best at doing something specific, well, it's that person we would like to work with and onboard into Strata. So you benefit from just the best of the best. Okay. All right, so the first partner to join is Digital Rain Lab. And Digital Rain Lab is specialized into synthetic sound generation, and you can uh, judge of that with the, the first three collections. So space station, sci-fi user interface, sci-fi weapon. So we're really into the synth uh, world there. And by the way, uh, space ambience, space station, sorry, is which is an ambience collection, is uh, laid out to release in January. So it's really it's it's imminent. It's happening now as we speak. So Digital Rain Lab, the first partner. Our second partner is Sonex Makina, which is really into high-end field recording engineer, high-quality, pristine type of, of recordings. And they're covering something that is dramatically missing in Strata right now, which is the, the drone sound. So we're, we're going with the quadcopter drones uh, collection. Um, and this is as soon as February, I believe, we released this collection. And followed by Rock the Speaker Box, which is into high quality. Of course, they're all high quality, but it's important. <laughs> it's really important to us and created type of, uh, of source sound. And we go with a series of sorcery uh, type of sounds with absorption, with strike, with whimsical uh, collections at first. And then we'll see what else. And again, we don't want to produce too many. We want to produce some, get your feedback, and make sure that uh, what is offered is covering your need and, and your expectations. Um, and then we have spec travelers. And when I contacted them and I said, do you have a short sentence for the live stream to describe what you're doing? They came back with this really fancy sentence saying, embracing artistic constraint as the catalyst to create truly unique sounds. So, um, so and by that, I understood that sentence when they told me about their uh, creative process. So for example, for Submersion, 
they purchased a hydrophonic type of microphone and their goal was really to see, okay, what can we do with that? And to which extent can we push that type of technology and what type of new sounds can be created with that? So they settled their constraint about just working with that type of microphone. And Quantum is similar. It's a different type of microphone and they, they read. So, and for the future collection, they were telling us, yeah, our way of our modus operandi basically is to set a set of constraints that are really tight and from there see what type of you know creativity can come out of it. And finally, uh, we have the Monster Factory. Um, and they describe themselves as extreme vocal performers for monsters, creatures, and vocal stunt sounds. And speaking with Sebastian Croteau, uh, that is the founder of the company, um, and he described himself as a vocal stunt performer. And vocal stunt performer for me is just like, wow, what a concept. <laughs> um, but I think I think it's really true. And and Sebastien is, well, originally is a death metal singer. And so he really has a super mastery of the analogy, the anatomy uh, of his voice and body and so on to do those type of things. And if you spend some time with Sebastien, like he'll mimic all sort of, you know, zombies or creatures and and, and so on. And he has a pool of talent with him that are also death metal, you know, uh, singers and performer, and they create all sort of creature sounds and all that. So the very first collection we'll produce uh, with them is the zombie collection, um, because yeah, that's that's been requested and zombies are popular, you know. And and the second one is human uh, onomatopias, and this is difficult. It's difficult to ask your actor that you're hiring to do dialogue line to kind of destroy their voice by dying and receiving hit and all that. So I think it's going to be quite useful to have a, a collection dedicated to those kind of um, of extreme voices, basically. So uh, so that's great. And well, yeah, welcome to the Strata family. It's going to be great. Uh, and we are starting releasing collection from them as soon as January next year. Cool. Um, so let's look at the schedule again for um, for the releases. So first of all, as I was saying, we are now at 37, maybe 38 at this point in time, uh, but close enough to to that number. And and by the way, two things, two collections here. So the footsteps with almost 12,000 sounds, and the physics collection with 10,000 sounds. Uh, those are exclusive to Strata. So for other collections, they they may already exist at Boom or with the, the new partners we're, we're talking uh, that I just presented. Uh, but these two are exclusive to Strata. And they are the two biggest collection of, of Strata. It's almost, uh, I don't know, one third of the entire collection with these two. And, and by the way, when we say 12,000 sound, 10,000 sound, what is a sound in Strata? A sound in Strata is a region in Reaper containing multiple tracks and containing multiple media items uh, in there, or clips, depending which guy you're using. So, and by the way, a media item or a clip, if you don't like what you're hearing in that thing, those are what, what are called sausage files, right? So those are, if you go to the left or the right, you're going to get other takes, other recordings of the same type of, of items in there. So sometimes you can just you know, move around the thing, and maybe you prefer one of the variation in there. So there is a lot of content in Strata already. Just to give you an idea, the 37 collection is currently equals currently 160,000 source file, and those source files are sausage file that you can slide around. You know, uh, so it's 47,000. Strata sound, so regions basically containing multiple tracks, 558 uh, Reaper projects, and so on. Like it's it's huge. Um, okay, and just to give you an idea for the the footstep matrix, where like we cover all those classic actions of walking, running, sneaking, and so on. Uh, classic type of shoes and even generic uh, type of shoes because of the the type of surfaces like walking on sand or ice with a light or a heavy shoe sounds quite 
similar. Um, but all those surfaces, all those layers, basic detail, weighting, we separated the heel from the tip, so you can even randomize that at runtime. And by default, there is always 16 variations of each of these combinations. And that's why that's how we arrived to basically 12,000 region just for the footsteps. And physics is a bit similar. And physics is interesting, though, because it's the combination of two elements. First, you start with an object that is of a certain type, certain size, and collision type, speed, and force. So that will that object produces a sound, and then it hits a surface. And that surface also emits a sound and is made of a specific type and size and speed and force and so on. And it's the combination of these two sounds together that creates your basically your physics sound in runtime. So again, with this matrix, you're kind of covered for a lot of things happening. And we have in mind to produce uh, an extension to the physics collection as well for um, for some of the action and some of the, the, the type. Um, I don't know exactly when it's going to be laid out, but uh, yeah, we want to make it even more comprehensive, basically. OK, so uh, I'm only showing them the first three months because there are still some planning elements, some collection that may slide a month before and after. And I don't want to create expectations, but we're pretty much locked for the first three months of the year uh, for January, February, and March. Uh, the collections at the bottom are from the new partners. The one on top uh, are produced by Boom because they're they're still around, right? Um, so that's who is there. And then we will have between something something between 15 to 19 collections during the course of 2024. So again, our our cadence is one or two collections release every month, and we're skipping July for summer vacation and. December for Christmas vacation, just to make sure that we can breathe a bit. And what we've done last year, we released free collections during uh, these moments, so uh, so people can you know evaluate uh, the content and so on. Anyway, so that's that's our uh, release calendar. Okay, I'm, on, I'm under the impression that I'm cramming you with a lot of information. <laughs> so hopefully you're not uh, <laughs> overwhelmed by now. This is the last portion of my presentation, and it's about the subscription model. And a feedback we received, and it's not something that surprised us at all, actually, but we, we started with a quite rigid type of subscription models, where it was a three-year subscription, and, and that's it. And we had tons of ideas for subscription models, but again, the MVP approach, where we say, let's put one out there let's collect feedback and let's make sure that when we arrive with new subscription options that they will really fit well with the reality of video game developers of content providers contractors of students and schools you know of this audience or these audiences and make sure that we serve them as well as best as we can so um, first of all, it's a subscription thing. And the idea for a subscription is because you get access to all the existing content and you have access to every new collection that is produced on a monthly basis. So this is across the board for all the new options. And the very first one, we actually know, we, we kind of work them all together. But the one that is the most contrasting, let's put it this way, with what we started with, is this idea of offering a single project type of subscription. And this was by speaking with video game developers, um, mostly developers using WISE. And what the producers or the audio directors were telling us is, you know, it's when the production is greenlit that they receive their budget. That's when they purchase their WISE license. And that's the moment where they'd like to purchase uh, Strata as well. And they know that they have you know, full-time dedicated sound designers on that project. So they don't need the sound designer to be able to work on many projects. So they'd like something just for that project uh, in there. So, so we said, that makes a lot of sense. And we came up with this single project license where you'll, you have three different tiers. And the first one, and we found a poetic uh, name for it. So the Duet <laughs> allows you to have two users up to 24 months 
to get access to Strata for a single price of two thousand five hundred dollar um, during the term, the two year term, basically for two users. Um, so that's the do it, and we have the quartet, which is four person for a duration of thirty six months or three years at a price of six thousand, and finally the orchestra, and this is really to help you know some of the developers that that we've discussed with are really creating huge gain. And sometimes they have teams separated in North America and Europe and Asia. So there's a lot of user. It comes and go. So it's difficult for them to say how many user precisely they need. So we've made it unlimited uh, sound designers up to four year at a somewhat higher price. Okay. But again, it's a, it's a one shot deal. So you pay $12,000 and you have Strata for four years for whatever, how many people uh, how many sound designers you need for that project. But it's only for that project, of course. So if you need to be able to work with any number of projects, because I don't know, your students or your uh, content providers, or you're working in a video game company, but they do two or three games and you do sounds for e any of these games, then you fall into the any number of projects, which is the initial plan that we uh, offered anyway. So for a professional, they what we added that is new is the one year subscription um, at one thousand dollar and that was because the three-year commitment for a lot of people that seemed to be too committing for them especially and one of the reason was like it's a new format they don't know if they're gonna like it or not and or they already own boom they they like to have their that content into the strata format um, but they are kind of wishing that there's new partners, which we're solving with the new partners coming in. Uh, but the three years commitment, they don't know how fast we will we will have operated by incorporating new collection. So basically, we said, okay, no problem. We'll offer a one year uh, subscription uh, for these people. That works fine. We still have our three years, uh, which is our current plan at the moment, and this is kind of a 15% discount if you compare to the one year, which is kind of normal, right? If when you come in to a longer period, typically you're going to have a better deal uh, for any type of products <laughs> out there that we're consuming. Um, and of course, you can purchase like single licenses, but also uh, multi users subscriptions. And if it's your case, if you're a studio or a large company and you want multiple users, or you need multiple users in your team to have Strata, what is nice is that you have a portal in, in the system where you can allocate those seats to your teammate. If somebody was to leave, you can reassign that Strata seat to somebody else, and it's easy to manage uh, on your side. So this three years, what is currently the plan as of today? And the one year is the new plan um, that will soon arrive. And by the way, the live stream is just a few days, a few weeks uh, too early for us to have all that available on the website. But it's imminently. Like those plans will appear really uh, in, a, in a short future uh, for that. So stay tuned uh, on this. And finally, and that's most certainly the plan that I'm the most proud of is the student plan. And talking with students, talking with teachers, with academic institutions, um, and especially because it's Strata, it's so like having all the session, the reverse engineering, the learning, just looking at those projects and you're learning. So we knew we had something really strong, really valid for this audience, but how can we make it accessible for students? Because a thousand dollar per year for a professional that's kind of okay like you know it's the, the cost of doing business and you're selling your services but if you're a student it's kind of difficult to swallow and why i'm saying i was proud because we made it most certainly the most accessible professional library available for students on the planet that's that's a bit you know maybe it's a huge statement there i haven't validated that but but it's a 90 percent discount you are a student, and for $100, you can have the full strata with all the upcoming release for a year. So whatever where you're located on the planet and whatever your budget, I'm pretty sure that 80 90% of the students out there will be able to afford having strata on their own laptop, on their own thing. 
And if they cannot, we also offer that for academic institutions so that they can install Strata on workstations and labs and computers in the school at $100 per workstations uh, and labs. So for the students that cannot or don't want to, you know, subscribe to Strata, they if their school uh, purchase some of those um, of those workstation seats, then they will have access at the school. And again, really accessible to schools. There are some schools that are relatively rich, but typically schools are not super <laughs> wealthy as well uh, there. So so yeah, so that's I'm I'm really happy that we've made Strata so easy to, uh, to, to access by the vast majority of the students and schools out there. So that's a great achievement. OK, so this is the end of the subscription thing. Uh, let's just do a little recap. So when we released last year, Strata was the first, and it's still the first and only uh, sound effects library available where the content is offered in multi-track format. It comes with all the plugins and all the ability to you know, customize uh, what you want. And the new things that we added during the course of the last year is integrations into WISE and Reaper and also into Soundly, SoundMiner, and Basehead so that it's also part of your day-to-day -day workflow with the tools you're using the most uh, during the day assuming you're a sound designer. Um, and we also uh, added five partners. So with Boom, we, we are now at six partners to contribute content to Strata. And there will probably, there's already other partners out there that manifested their interest to be part of Strata. We needed to start with the first group, like, you know, experience that. Again, MVP, you know, we go step by step. We'll have these new five uh, partners. We'll get the feedback and we'll most certainly onboard new partners during the course of this year. Will their new collection be available in 2024? TBD. Uh, but if not, it's going to be 2025. Uh, at least that's the, the goal or the, what we wish for uh, with the new partners. And we. Uh, have more subscription options now. And with you know the one year, the three year, the academic and the project base, this we're covering a lot of grounds with that. If we're not, if you say, hey, I'm, I've got this specific case and there's none of these four plans that works for me, contact us. And maybe if there's a, many of you in the same situation, well, maybe it's just a matter of creating a new plan that will address you. but. We want to we do that for you <laughs> so we want to make sure that you can afford it and you see the full value uh for for what you're paying for and it makes sense for you so um that's there and of course it's an ever-growing uh number of collections and that's what we keep we will keep doing during this year and the following years uh for sure so uh thank you very much that was uh, our last year with strata Wow, what a fantastic overview, a ton of great updates, Simon. Congratulations on the first year of Strata. It is been great to watch it grow. Yeah, and, and thanks for the team here working on Strata. They're they're really good, they're really fast and you know reactive, and in, we had to adjust a lot of things. Um, and it goes beyond the production of it. Like we had to work, you know, marketing and sales and everyone at AK. So everyone is involved in, in one way or another. And the people at Boom have been fantastic. And the new partners so far, the relationship is really great. And the content is in production as we speak. So, um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's really exciting. Yeah, it's fantastic. And we'll be landing at 2 p.m. on Friday with Chase Steele to go into the new library for creatures. Uh, so circle back if you want to get a lens on Strata in Reaper as well as uh, as an example in Unreal. So uh, great series that goes deep into the collections uh, coming up this Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern. So, uh, you know, just great content, uh, great folks out there that we're working with and so excited to have that uh, out there in the world for people to access that uh, academic license. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Alexandra 
Beringer in the chat mentions that uh, that it's strata is great for students and cool. uh, and we agree right it's a uh, it's an incredible learning resource for for sound design that uh, that you know gives you all of the nuts and bolts and pieces it's so cool yeah uh yeah. well great overview it's the fourth wise worldwide online expo and uh, we started in 2020 with these uh overviews of what we were doing uh that first one was eight hours long <laughs> uh, yeah early pandemic uh, yeah. yeah yeah uh and i'm glad to say that we landed right at an hour a uh, couple of action-packed presentations on the new WISE 2023.1 and Strata. Uh, it's been great. It's been cool. great. Uh, thanks to folks who tuned in in the chat. It's great to see you out there. Shout out to uh, all the folks out there doing fun stuff with interactive audio. And I think that's it. Until that's next it time. Too, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Damien, to host all these live streams. You're you're just the best doing it. So uh, <laughs> keep doing it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, keep in touch, folks. Drop us a line. We're out here listening. And uh, let's keep going. Definitely. All right. Cool. Take care. All right. Thank you.